Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and today we're going to take yet another look at the Packard Bell Legend 1510 Supreme, which is in its current home right now, uh, in the bedroom next to the uh, 822 to the right there. And what am I using this computer for? Well, it's now my uh, Windows 3.1 computer for the bedroom. This computer originally came with Windows 95, but, you know, since I've got the 822 running 95, I might as well have the 1510 run 3.1. Um, quick overrun of the specs again. Of course, you are very, should be very familiar with this computer if you've been a long-time subscriber. I've had this computer since 2005. This is the Packard Bell Legend 1510 Supreme. 120 megahertz Pentium. Originally had 16 megs of RAM. I think it's got 24 or 32 in it right now. And it's now running Windows 3.1, as I've um, said before. So, we're going to do a quick overview of um, all the software I've got on here right now. So let me reposition the cell phone, which I'm recording on right now, and we'll take a closer look. By the way, if you're wondering where the... Legend 204 CD is, well, it's sitting under the desk right now, unhooked, but it's still running just fine. I just switch between the two, depending on which mood I'm in. Right now, I'm in a 1510 Supreme mood, so this is the computer that is in action right now. So let's go ahead and power it up. I have, actually, I haven't turned it on in a few weeks, so hopefully it still works. No reason why it shouldn't. There we go. Okay, it's at its original 16 megs of RAM, which is fine. It's more than enough for Windows 3.1. And it's running on a 2 gigabyte compact flash card. And we've got a special boot menu that um, my friend Jay from the Flying Scotsman made me a couple of years ago, I believe. We got uh, Microsoft Windows with networking and Microsoft Windows without networking. We'll do with networking because why not? I do have this connected to my network with a Netgear card, a PCI card, and I do have a parallel port zip drive connected to this. I never really use it, but I figured, you know, I've got this. I got a zip drive. Why not hook it up to something? <laughs> Might have to do some uh, refresh rate adjusting. Okay, that's a lot better. I uh, turned it down to 60 hertz so you won't be having any spaz attacks. <laughs> so, this is um, Program Manager, how I've got it set up right now. Of course, um, like I do with all my 3.1 boxes, I've got plug-in for Windows, which adds a lot of um, very good features to the Windows 3.1 Program Manager without changing the um, the actual interface. And I've got all the Packard Bell bundled software. There's our current date and time. So CMOS battery is still good in the system. And there's our uh, eject icon for if we have a zip drive, uh, a zip disk in the zip drive. Uh, we'll go ahead and pop one in. Go to File Manager. Don't know what's on this disk, but there it is. It's like one, it looks like a disc full of stuff I uh, saved back in early 2000s. I'm seeing dates for 2000, 2001, 2002. Let's see what's on, see what this picture is. Got PaintShop Pro installed. That's my church choir in, for back at Christmas 2001. Probably want to save that. That's pretty cool. 
But anyway, um, we can eject it by double clicking that. <laughs> and it does it automatically for us, which is really nice. So, um, we can also get on the internet, I think we can at least. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't when it comes to Windows 3.1. But we do have an internet connection, I can tell you that. Well, a network connection, I know, but internet can't really guarantee that. Hard drive LED is flashing like crazy, so it's doing something. Let's just try going to Google. Don't get your hopes up, folks. <laughs> oh, no wonder it's set to use um, dial-up modem to use a local area network. And we'll have to restart Windows for that. So, one moment. Okay, let's try this again. Still no guarantee that it's going to work. Let's just uh, force it to go to the oldnet.com. Yeah, I'm starting to really lose my patience with this, so. And the system's frozen. That's nice. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. that did the trick. Anyway, um, there's the internet, or in this case, lack of internet on this computer. <laughs> Probably ought to use a different browser if you ask me. So let's try a game out. Let's see what we got on here. Uh, got some Sierra goodies here, some Maxis goodies. Let's try Widget Workshop. I've never, I don't, I'm not sure if I've ever really shown this game before. This is um, Maxis's answer to the incredible machine in a way. You just build simple devices. Like you can uh, grab a source of light bulb here and a switch. Wow. What else can we do? And a key press, and we can, uh, I'll tell you what we can do. Grab one of these. Order, connect these together, and we can configure this to uh, play a wave file. Let's see what we have on this computer. File name is invalid. What do you mean? Okay, we can play the chord sound from Windows. Well, that works. <laughs> Try it with something else. Okay, uh, that was trying to record um, audio from the microphone, but I don't have a microphone connected. Let's try Tada. Yeah, very simple, but very fun in uh, several ways. 
Now here's a game that I've never shown on this channel before, but I've been meaning to for a few years now. This is the Flintstones Family Fun Pack from Yearn to Learn. Yearn to Learn made um, a few uh, very um, budget-oriented edutainment games featuring the Flintstones and um, Charlie Brown, Snoopy, and the Peanuts. And today we're, we'll take a quick look at the Flintstones edition. I had all of these growing up. I remember getting these at um, the Toys R Us near Carolina Circle Mall when I was six years old. And um, coincidentally, these were the first games I ever had, or software in um, general, that required a product key. Okay, then. Oh, there we go. I can do it the old-fashioned way. No thanks. Okay, uh, like everything um, back then, you have to restart. Thankfully, we just have to restart Windows, it appears. Okay, let's fire up the Flintstones Fun Pack. Okay, please register your software, uh, Billy Core. And again, this is the first um, piece of software I ever owned to require a product key. And I've got it over here. I'll go ahead and show it on camera because of all the product keys YouTube's going to care about, I doubt it's going to be this one. <laughs> uh, F. C. And these games work on uh, Max of the Day as well. Okay, so there are several um, places we can go to, like um, Fossil's Photo Fixer. Find the five differences between the pictures and click on them. It's um, it's kind of like the uh, those uh, things they used to have in the highlights magazines when I was a kid. So you have to look really close. Um, Okay, something's covering Barney's foot right here. So that's one. Um, this crab's eyes are open in this, and it's not in this, so that's two. This jellyfish doesn't have any rays on that. So that's three. Uh, let's see, what else is there? I'm just getting a little bit more hard now. Okay, there's a third light right here, and there's not here. So we need one more. This fish has a, doesn't have a mouth, but this one does. So we'll go somewhere else now. Bedrock Art Gallery. Let's see what this is. I think I know what it's probably going to be. And I was right. It's their coloring pages. So let's uh, paint this in, shall we? Oh, uh, you have to... 
do it yourself. There's no fill-in tool. So yeah, not the uh, not the best out there, but <laughs> it's something. Not sure what that does. There we go. That's what I needed. Oh, now I see. This changes the size of the uh, the brush. Makes sense to me. Tell a tale library. What's this? Oh, it's kind of like uh, Mad Libs. The, uh... Sandwich. <laughs> Sandwich seemed to have a mind of its own after... Fred. Fred released it. If that... Steak. That steak would play with a... Egg. Egg. <laughs> if that egg would play with a... Fish. We play with a uh, telephone. Telephone. Then Wilma. Wilma should use a club. Club. Wilma. Basketball. Ball. Okay. The sandwich seemed to have a mind of its own after Fred released it. If that egg would play with a telephone, then Wilma should use a club basketball. Please give me that ball. I'm going to throw a strike. Well, still, uh... Still a better plot than most movies made these days. <laughs> so yeah, that's the Flintstones uh, fun pack. A little game from my childhood. Um, didn't play it a whole lot, but I do remember it quite well. Okay, let's drop down to DOS and play a couple of DOS games, shall we? Don't think I have a whole lot on here. Uh, let's see. I've been in kind of a Jill the Jungle mood lately. Let's give that a try. Grab my Gravis Blackhawk joystick. This is indeed a game that I do remember playing as a kid. I think like most DOS games, I probably got it from uh, the AOL Games Channel. I tell you, the AOL Games Channel was a source of so much joy for me as a kid on the computer. I was introduced to um, several games um, on that on the AOL Games channel that I still love to this game to this day, like um, the Incredible Machine, Firefight, among others. I think even Skyroad's Christmas special came from there. Oops. Tells you about superheroes retiring because they're not as awesome as Jill of the jungle. <laughs> 
stupid bees. <laughs> Not the bees! Yeah, bad Nicolas Cage reference here. I've heard a lot better though. <laughs> Start trying to be a little bit more careful now. I'm running low on health. I'm gonna try to do this without cheats if I can. doing this completely out of order. <laughs> This, this really is a good game. Just a classic DOS platformer. Ooh, I forgot something. I forgot the thing that makes me jump higher. back through here again since I screwed up. Just need to be careful. in Florida, gators are out. <laughs> I'm a bird now. Metamorphosis. Isn't it grand? Level 1. <laughs> level 1 and level 7 share the same map. I like the music in this level.
And that's enough of Jill the Jungle there. Okay, we can close this video out with one more game. One I'm not sure if I've shown before. This is an extremely old game called Paratrooper. I believe this is from like 1982 or something. Yep, 1982. Basically, you just gotta shoot down helicopters. And these little men there. Never been too good at this game, but it's a good, very, very simple game to play. Doesn't take too much strategy. Okay. Now this is the part that I usually get killed at when they drop these bombs. Yep, there we go. Dead. I guess this is what they call a button masher. For being just a tiny little squeaker can um, attached to the motherboard, this computer has a pretty good PC speaker. I'm gonna get bombed again. Uh, was that supposed to happen? <laughs> And um, watch these guys right here, they're about to kill me. Yep. Dead. <laughs> Again. And of course, since this is such an old game, you can't really exit out of it, so you just have to reset the computer itself. Okay, that's the Packer Bell Legend 1510 Supreme, which is currently in the bedroom running Windows 3.1. Hope you enjoyed this video, and um, hope to see you for the next one. Until, ne until then, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.